morning and welcome to this fourth video following my efforts to build a war boat. <laughs> Unfortunately though, things aren't going so well. Let me explain. You see, this is called a tillering stick or a tillering tree. It allows the bowyer to stand back and watch the bow as it's bent. And whilst this happens, he can adjust the bend of the bow and reduce the thickness where it's a little bit stiff and avoid areas where it's a little bit weak and end up with a bow that when fully drawn describes the shape of a part circle or ellipse. The work on the bow takes place along here, along the belly, gradually removing wood a little bit at a time, a millimetre, sometimes less, and then reassessing the bend, drawing it again, and repeating the process until that lovely, perfect circle shape appears. Unfortunately, it was here, on the tiller, that I made my beginner's mistake. As I continued work on the bow, I could see something wasn't right, but I couldn't identify what it was. I kept working and working, and the problem just got worse and worse. It was at this time I stopped and asked for help, and it came in torrents. I received over 60 messages giving me advice, guidance and support. Thank you all. Perhaps you can see on this image kindly supplied to me by an experienced bowyer where the shape has gone wrong. Look at the stiff spots, look at the weak spots. In fact, I was right, the shape is all wrong, but I didn't know how to fix it. The weak spot is here, a slight depression in the wood just here, probably caused by me. I continued to bend the bow and began to create what's called a hinge. That is an area that is taking more stress than the rest of the bow. Because an ideally shaped bow has the stresses spread evenly all the way along the length of the bow. Unfortunately, to relieve the tension on this weak spot, I have to reduce the thickness of the bow up and down its length. Perhaps more at the tips, perhaps less in the middle, and the result of that will be, hopefully, a reasonably shaped bow. But unfortunately, I may fail to reach the draw weight that was my target. 100 to 110 pounds. So today I'm continuing work on this bow. And I hope, eventually, to be able to remove it from the tiller.
as I work at trying to correct the problems on this bow, I'm now concentrating just upon the shape, rather than the eventual draw weight. Okay, well, I think it's decision time for me and this bow. I've put it on the tiller, I've drawn it, I've taken wood off, put it back on the tiller and drew it again. It's a reasonable shape, it's by no means perfect. I'm not entirely happy with it. I think the draw weight is hovering around 90 to 100 pounds at around 31 to 32 inches. I certainly can't draw it yet, but I think I'm going to stop there. The next stage is to tidy the bow up to remove all the tooling marks. Perhaps I'll do a little bit more work on the sapwood here. I'll polish the knocks, clean up the ends, maybe finesse the tips a little bit more and just make the bow look reasonably presentable. the end of this initial cleanup of this English U longbow made in the style of a medieval war bow. There's still lots more work to do finishing this bow and improving its appearance but there's one job I'd still like to do. Well that's the end of this fourth video in a series following my efforts to build a war bow. And I finally got there. The tiller's not very good, I've made some mistakes on the back of the bow here, on the sapwood. But in the end I reached the draw weight I hoped for, 110 pound at 32 inches draw. I'm happy. In video 5 I hope to take you with me into the field where I'm using this bow. But for now I've got to try just once to see whether I can draw it.